I'd like to make you welcome to this Gospel presentation on behalf of the Christians that meet in the Gospel Hall in Limavady. Thank you very much for giving us of your time to listen to the message of the Gospel. It's just a short message for about 15 minutes. To do that, we're going to turn to the Scriptures and we're going to read just three verses from John's Gospel, chapter 19. So if you have a Bible handy, turn to the Gospel of John, please, and we'll read from chapter 19. <clears throat> At verse 28. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar. They filled a sponge with vinegar and put it upon hyssop and put it to his mouth. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Now we look to the Lord to bless to us the reading of the Holy Scriptures. And for that purpose, we're just going to pray for a moment. Let us pray. Father, we bow in the name of the Lord Jesus and give thanks to thee for thy word. Thank thee above all for these recorded words of the Saviour upon the cross that tell us of the greatness of his work, the greatness of his sacrifice for sin, the finality of that sacrifice and the fullness of the payment that he made when he said it is finished. And we pray that as we consider it this afternoon for just a few moments that some friend listening, that they might be able to understand that Christ has died to save them, and that what he did upon the cross is enough to meet their need if they put their trust, their personal faith in the Lord Jesus. So we look to thee for thy blessing as we commend thy word to thee in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Now these verses that we have read together speak to us about the, the death of the Lord Jesus upon the cross. The greatest event this world has ever seen. The crucifixion of the Lord Jesus. The greatest cry the world has ever heard is this one of six or, or seven that he made. This is the sixth cry of seven statements that he made from the cross. And this one is particularly precious and particularly full of meaning in relation to the gospel because when the saviour said it is finished it's three words in our language it's just one word in the saviour's language the word the saviour spoke was to tell us die which means something is paid in full paid entirely no further payment required as far as sin is concerned that's what the saviour was saying that he had made a payment in those six hours upon the cross the saviour had made a payment for the atonement of man's sin I want you to think about this great announcement. Firstly, the meaning of it. What did he mean when he said it is finished? Then the implications of it. What are the implications of this statement and its meaning? And then the acceptance of it. Just three things for you to consider for a, a moment or two. The meaning of it. What did he mean? It is finished. As I say, that's the word that signifies something has been paid in full. If you owe a debt to someone. You owed him a hundred pounds back in those days. You went along and you paid the bill in full. The man you owed the money to, he would take the stamp and he would stamp upon it to tell us die. Same word the Saviour used from the cross here. Just the same as today, you get a receipt. You pay an invoice and you get a receipt and it says paid in full. That means nothing more needs to be, there's no further demands on that invoice. No further demands can be made. It's been paid in full. Now the Saviour knew that it says in verse 28 that all things were now accomplished. The scriptures had been fulfilled. And so he now says, it is finished. Nothing more to be done by the Saviour. Nothing more to be paid by the Saviour is the idea. Those six hours of suffering upon the cross have satisfied the demand of God. And immediately he said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and he gave up the ghost. I want you to think about the meaning of it. As far as God was concerned, he had sent a son, says the father sent the son to be the saviour of the world. He had sent a son to be the saviour by making a sacrifice for sin. The Bible says that once in the end of the age hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. You see, going away back to the Garden of Eden, Man, it's Adam had sinned, the whole of the human race have sinned, and that sin needs an answer as far as God is concerned. And the only answer is the sacrifice of an innocent, spotless victim. 
The only spotless victim available was his son. That's why he came. He came in the form of human flesh that he might make a sacrifice for sin. And now at the end of those hours upon the cross, he said, it is finished. Did he mean that he was finished? Not at all. Did he mean that just uh, there's nothing more that he could do? He'd struggled for six hours and he's now giving up. Not at all. This wasn't the gasp of a dying man. This wasn't uh, the, the, the whisper of a man who's now come to an end of himself. Another gospel tells us he cried with a loud voice. He cried at his finish. Why, he knows he has triumphed in the sacrifice. God is pleased with what he has done. The blood of the Saviour upon the cross is what was needed for your sins and mine. Therefore, the many hymns speak about this one that I love. is hymn writer says, Perfect salvation, Jesus has died. Perfect forgiveness flows from his side. Justice no longer lifteth the rod, satisfied wholly, answered in blood. That is, God is satisfied. He's found an answer in the blood of his son. That's what the Saviour meant when he said, it is finished. By shedding his blood and suffering upon the cross, he has made an end of sin. He has paid a price for the release of the sinner. Not only the meaning of it, but think of the implications of it. The implications of it were tremendous. The implications of it, firstly, ritually. Because at the moment the Saviour cried, in the temple in Jerusalem, there was a great big curtain that hung between the holy place and the holiest of all. And when the Saviour cried, it is finished, that curtain was torn completely apart from the top right down to the bottom, exposing the system in Jerusalem, the religious system full of its ritual, but absolutely empty. You see, in the tabernacle and then in the temple, God dwelt with his people. God dwelt above the mercy seat between the cherubim. There was what they called the Shekinah, the presence of God in unutterable glory behind the veil. But when the Saviour said, it is finished, the veil was torn apart. Men were able to see there's absolutely nothing in there. It's empty religion. It's empty ritual. The one who was the presence of God amongst men, instead of being behind the veil, he was actually upon a cross outside the city, rejected by men. The implications ritually. Then the implications dispensationally. When the Apostle Paul is writing about the Saviour's death in 1 Timothy chapter 2, he says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all. That is, by giving himself a ransom, he's paying the price for the release of a captive, is the idea, or the release of a hostage. And he's paid it in full. He's given himself as a ransom for all. Then the Apostle goes on to add, given himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. In other words, to be preached or testified, given witness to, in a time appropriate to itself. You see, 500 years, 1,000 years before the Lord come, the prophets went preaching that a ransom has been paid and a sacrifice has been accepted. Why? Because the Saviour hadn't come. But now, after the death of the Lord Jesus. This is the great message that goes out across the world. This is the message testified, given witness to, in its own time. The Saviour has come. The work for salvation is done. The price has been paid for your release and mine. The implications of it dispensationally is brought to an end, that Old Testament dispensation where God demanded people obey the law and God demanded sacrifice for sin. That comes to an end with the Saviour crying, It is finished. Sacrifices, they're all over. <clears throat> but then, think about the implications of it individually. That is, the implications for each individual person. You see, there's maybe a wee chorus that sums it up well, and you think about this, maybe you know it. There's a way back to God from the dark paths of sin. There's a door that is opened and you may go in. At Calvary's cross is where you begin when you come as a sinner to Jesus. You see, the fact that the Saviour made a provision and paid a price, gave a satisfactory satisfaction to God on behalf of the whole world, for he is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. 
Having made that sacrifice, there is an implication for you personally and individually. You've got to avail of what the Saviour has done. John chapter 3. With these tremendous words, you know them, probably the best known verse in the Bible. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Who'll have everlasting life and not perish? People who go to church? Doesn't say that. The people who keep the Ten Commandments? Doesn't say that. The people who live a clean and tidy life and are moral and upright? Doesn't say that. It says, whosoever believeth in him, believeth in the man who died on the cross, believes in the Saviour who said, it is finished. There's implications for it individually. And this is why I said that the gospel is based upon the death of Christ. It's the very foundation of the gospel, but it's also the starting point of the Christian life. It's also the starting point of conversion. Every person who gets saved, every person who's on their way to heaven, they have come to this point in their experience where they trust the Lord Jesus who died upon the cross for their sins. They all come from different backgrounds. The Lord uses different verses of scripture to speak to them. But they all come to this one vital point where they accept that what the Saviour did upon the cross is all that I need and I'm going to put my trust in him. The meaning of it, it's finished. The work for salvation is finished. Nothing more needs to be done. The payment for your release has been paid. Nothing more needs to be paid. The implications of it had tremendous implications ritually and dispensationally and has tremendous implications individually because it means that you as an individual sinner have to put your trust in the, the, the person who died upon the cross, the Lord Jesus. But you see, that's all gospel theory. That's all, those are all gospel facts. A person could know all of them and still never be in heaven. A person could understand all of that and yet end up in a lost eternity. I want you to think for a moment, not only about the meaning of it and the implications of it, but the acceptance of it. That is, are you prepared to accept that what the Saviour did is enough? You see, Saviour, <clears throat> he said to a man called Nicodemus in John chapter 3, he said, even if the Son of Man must be lifted up, speaking about his cross, lifted up on the cross, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life you see there's the saviour lifted up on the cross but the acceptance of it is that whosoever believeth in him the fact that the saviour was lifted up on the cross and that's an historic fact and the fact that god accepted the sacrifice the saviour made that saves no one that's the provision that god has made but there's got to be an acceptance of it there's got to be an understanding that I have got to put my trust in him. And so it is that I would urge you just to think not only about your sin and salvation and the Saviour, but think about your own personal faith. Have you come to a moment in life's experience where you have put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus? Because the work for salvation is all done. I'll say somebody, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing the best I can. I'm keeping the Ten Commandments as well as I can. I'm going to church as often as I can. I'm living as good a life as I can. But you see, the person who gets saved is somebody is not keeping the Ten Commandments to be saved. He's not living a good life to be saved. He's not trying his best to go to church to gain favour with God. All of those things he has left aside and he's just resting on this. Christ has done the work for me. Christ has paid the price for me. You see, is the difference between something that's done and something that's being done. You see, there's a vast difference. When you're doing something, it's not done. And when it's done, you're no longer doing it. You can't be doing it and have it done at the same time. And if the work for salvation is done upon the cross, therefore there's no need for you to be doing anything to be added to it because God will accept nothing more. God will accept nothing else. God will accept nothing less. All you've got to do is put your faith in the Lord Jesus. If you believe, you'll be saved, your sins will be forgiven and you'll be on your way to heaven. If you don't believe, you'll be lost and still on your way 
to a lost eternity. So think about this thing. The Saviour upon the cross, he said, it is finished. What did he mean? He meant the payment for your sins and your salvation is paid fully. When he said it is finished, what are the implications of it? The implications are worldwide. Not only are the implications dispensational and ritual and individual, but they're universal. They reach out to the whole of the world, every person in the world. He has died for every man since. But what about the acceptance of it when the Saviour said, it is finished? Are you prepared just to accept that what the Saviour did, that's enough for you? That's how salvation is found. Listen to the words of a hymn that explain it, I think, far better than I could. Just turn it over in your mind as we come to a close. When the Saviour said, it is finished, everything was fully done. Done as God himself would have it, Christ the victory fully won. Vain and futile your endeavour to improve or add thereto God's free grace is thus commended to believe and not to do the work is done stop doing just believe accept what the Saviour did let us pray Father we bow and give thanks to thee for the mighty work of the Saviour upon the cross thank thee for his triumphant cry it is finished thank thee for the implications of it not only universally, but individually. And we pray now that someone listening to this presentation will bow in acceptance of the Saviour's work. Trust him for the salvation of their soul. Bless thy word, we pray. Bless all who have listened as we commend us to thee in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Well, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for listening. And do pay attention to the work of the Saviour for your sins upon the cross.